Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we'd like to thank you for coming out and help, uh, celebrating the class of 2022. To begin with, we would like to invite Pastor Reed to have a um, prayer for us. So, you can come on. All right, graduates, please take a stand, take a bow. Let's give them a huge round of applause. Don't they look great? You may be seated. All right, I want everybody to take the phone out and turn on your flashlight. Take your phone, you've already had it out. Turn on that flashlight and let's throw a little light on our graduates. Let's do that right now. What a great shot. Let's wave it round and around. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Isn't that beautiful? We're just so pleased to congratulate all of you. You look great. Before I give this invocation, you've just made one of the most important walks in your entire life. Walking through those bailings, you will never forget it. And if you do, there's a recording of it, and you can go probably to YouTube and other places and see it played back over and over again. But along with that walk, I want to leave you with something that you will not forget, hopefully. Because we can run, we can fly, we can look forward to so many things in life, but sometimes walking, when you get as old as I am, you're going to find that walking is the best medicine. I don't do enough of it. But walking means something to me, and I want to leave it with you. W in the word walk means witness. Slow your life down so that you can not just smell the roses, but see those that are around you. See that sunset and sunrise. See life as you watch it pass you by. The A in the word walk stands for acceptance. Because as you grow, you're going to be asked to accept a lot of things in life. Acceptance can be the answer to a lot of the challenges that you might face. And then my favorite word, and hopefully yours too, is love. W-A-L, love. That's by far the most important word in life. And finally, the letter K, for know thyself. Get to know yourself, love life, accept it as it comes, and be able to witness life as it moves around you. If you think about the walk you just made and you remember those meanings, that walk will be so significant as you continue your journey. And the church said, Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, a God who is known by many names, but omnipotent, omnipresent, the same. You are heard in many voices, Lord, and we invoke your presence here in the north slope of Alaska tonight, or this afternoon. 
Today we celebrate the accomplishments of those who received their high school diplomas, of those who began new chapters in their lives. We invoke your presence and your blessings upon them. There are those here who have passed through Barrow High School who now look with favor and satisfaction upon those who are graduating today. There are a number of Barrow graduates that are present, Lord. Continue to bless them as they join with these new graduates tonight. Many of them seldom look to the right or look to the left, but they have joined together. There are those here who have struggled and arrived here today battered and somewhat bruised. And then there are some who were not able to make it at all. Lord, we ask your blessings upon them and their families as well. Make each of us mindful, we pray, of what they have accomplished. Let success men self-esteem and give perspective to their achievements. Bless as well those who have supported them in their work, the parents, relatives, and friends who have helped along the way with their resources, prayers, and efforts in the classroom, at home, and on the way. Teachers who have given of themselves in ways that will only be understood with the passage of time. Families who have sacrificed much and friends who learned from them and taught them as only peers can. We ask special blessings on those who are participating in these ceremonies, the special guests, the presenters, the principal, the speaker, the valedictorian, the ludatorian. They have given much to this institution and we ask that the next chapter in the lives of all of these graduates be as successful as it has been for us. We pray for the security of this village and all the North Soak villages, our state, our nation, and our world. And we pray for the safety of those who defend our country, whoever and wherever they be. We thank you, Lord, for helping us cross from the journey of pre and post, and still more post COVID. You've brought us through, and we are grateful, Lord. Make us ever mindful of those on whose shoulders we stand, as well as those who follow in our path, even as we celebrate the accomplishments and transitions. May we continue to seek your wisdom Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Hear our prayer. And the church said. Thank you so much, Pastor Reed. Now I would like to invite Mata Ale to sing our national anthem, mm -hmm. and then Caitlin Brower and Tahalu Kwanenegona for the Inibek Pledge. We all please stand.
say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watch Were so gallantly streaming Kachik Saga Nagiga, Tuckeryak, Nala Nala, Tuckera, a Tuxin and a rat and an America me. Kachik Saga Lulu, Anga Lachinak, Sugar, and Anga, a Tassi Rock, Nanaka, Kana Katani, got him. A long at ten and a child, a ten and a cook to a silly Anga Lachikok to a Tuluichinuich. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good afternoon, and welcome to the 2022 Barrow High School graduation. Thank you all very much for being here today. My name is Mark Jenkins, and it is my honor and privilege to be serving all of you as the principal of Barrow High School. It feels great to have open admission packed house for graduation, the first since 2019. Today is a very special day in the lives of these graduates and for the whole community. It is a celebration of individual achievement, but it also serves as proof of all the efforts, support, guidance, and love given by parents, families, teachers, and so many others over the years. Again, welcome. I'd like to introduce those on the stage. Of course, we've already met Pastor Reed, school district school board member, Freda Negahek. Sorry about that. Nagiak. I had it right. SAC Representative Sarah Tuai, and Central Office Representative Tennessee Judkins. And now we have the senior slideshow.
I close my eyes and I can see a world that's waiting up for me that I call my own. Through the dark, through the door, through where no one's been before, but it feels like They can say, they can say it all sounds crazy They can say, they can say I've lost my mind I don't care, I don't care, so call me crazy We can live in a world that we design Cause every night
jungle fever uh, I was waiting for my graduation uh, Growing impatient uh, What I didn't know was this grown up world this Was just cool in a blown up world There's still gossip, there's still drama, there's still problems There's a right and there's a wrong There's still people that I think won't love me till I'm gone It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. When I see you We flew, good things we've been through. Then I'll be standing right here talking to you about another path. I know we love to hit the road and laugh, but something told me that it wouldn't last. Had to switch up, look at things different, see the bigger picture. Those were the days, hard work forever pays. Now I see you in a better place. Uh, how can we not talk about family when family's all that we got? Everything I would do, you were standing there by my side. And now you gon' be with me for the last it's ride. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you when I see you again First you both go watch your way in the vibe is feeling stronger with small turn to a friendship a friendship turn to a bond and that bond will never be broken the love will never get lost Well, it's hard to follow that up, but uh, I'm proud to uh, introduce the Anupia dancers. Louis, Sierra, Julian, Jenna Lee, Alyssa, Sakulik, and Maku. Hi guys. Whoa. So uh, first we are gonna do the opening, and then after us is gonna be the other cultures, and then we're gonna do a closing dance. So the first two dances we are gonna do is the wood chopping one and playing in playing with water. Thank you.
And now we have the Filipino answers. Dave, Marcus, Joshua, Claret, Clarice, Angelina, Mark, Joe Renz, Kyle, Charles, Jericho, Dominic, Michael, Brooke, John Carl, and Juliana. And now our Poly Polynesian dancers, Mata, Irvin, Tao, Nicholas, Khaleesi, and Maku. Correction, there's another Filipino dance, the ladies.
Introduce the Polynesian dancers, Mata, Irvin, Tao, Nicholas, Khaleesi, and Maku.
And our last performance is our Korean dancer, Chloe. Why don't we give the dancers just a minute or two more to get back, so if everyone would like to stand up and take a stretch, this would be a great time to do so. Someone to tell me what I should be doing. There is one more dance. It was my mistake. There is another dance.
Once again, our Inupiat dancers. Thank you all, that was fantastic. I have never seen dancing at a graduation before and, and that was all something very, very special. We have four academic awards this afternoon. We have co-valedictorians, a salutatorian, and a superintendent's honor roll award. First of our two valedictorians is Brooke Singson. So,
Over her high school career, Brooke has been on the volleyball team and cheer squad. She's a multi-year member of the student council and is taking classes at Ellis Abbott College. And in the fall, she's heading to UAA. Brooke is the daughter of Alanda and Eric Singson. So before I officially begin my speech, I'd like to preface it by backpacking off of some words that my principal, Mr. Jenkins, spoke at our baccalaureate ceremony this Wednesday. Those words being, I was just told I was going to be speaking at this two days ago. So in honor of true senior year fashion, I wrote this last night at midnight. So bear with me. Anyways, on behalf of the senior class of 2022, I'd like to welcome all family, friends, faculty, alumni, and distinguished guests. And to my fellow graduates, we finally made it. I, I have to say, growing up in a small, tight-knit community definitely has its perks. We have the privilege of saying that we've grown up with the same group of classmates since K3. We've been side by side for every important milestone our fifth grade parade, eighth grade promotion, and now senior graduation. And of course, the unforgettable high school memories, skipping our first class together, and our second class, and then our third class, but hey, who's counting? Words cannot describe how proud I am to be part of the class of 2022. Not only did we come out of our senior year with some of the smartest students and most talented athletes, but we beat the odds. We made it to graduation despite a global pandemic, but most importantly, we each finished senior English with Mr. Evans with only a few mental breakdowns. <laughs> today marks the end of an era. We walked into this school four years ago, and today will be the last time we walk out of it. Today will be full of lasts. Last class photos, our last time crying inside the school, and the last time we will ever all be in the same place at the same time. But as we reflect on the past, it's now time to look forward onto the future. Leaving high school is a big transition, yet it is one that is full of excitement and promise. I hope that no matter what your plans are, you will each be successful and follow your true dreams. There is no class with greater potential for greatness than the class of 2022. Without a doubt, our class would not be here today without the help of many. The continuous support from our community and the unconditional love from our parents and families has shaped our class into the successful individuals that we are today. And most of all, our teachers, who deserve the utmost credit and respect for not only educating us and helping us every step of the way, but for continuing to be our support system even on the days we want to give up. For that, they deserve a round of applause. I would not be on the stage speaking to you today without the help of my classmates who have continued to support me and encourage me in every way. Especially without my co-valedictorian, Joran Zambleza, <laughs> who worked alongside me all year long as we both stayed on top of our school and got the spot we both deserved. To each of my classmates, I say thank you. Thank you for giving me high school memories that I will never forget. <laughs> and for the privilege of speaking to you tonight as one of the 2022 valedictorians. Thank you. As Burke said, our second valedictorian and second valedictorian address is Joe Renz Nobleza. <laughs> Joe has taken college classes at Ilsavik. He has been a very active member of the class of 2022. 
and he's heading off to UAA in the fall. Joe Renz is the son of Liliana and Renato Noblenzo. Welcome friends, family, fellow graduates, and the Barrow High School faculty. These past four years have gone by faster than I imagined. I remember when we were graduating from elementary school to middle school, then promoting to high school. We were so young that it's kind of awkward to see us as young adults. Some of us have grown facial hair, gotten taller, or stayed the same height. And now we're here. One of the most fulfilling moments of our lives. The long nights and long hours spent on finishing an assignment before midnight, along with the several caffeinated drinks, courtesy of BNC Java, not sponsored, has paid off. This senior year was different. We came back to school from a post-apocalyptic situation, but we persevered. Given that, I want to thank every single person who has helped during the pandemic as first responders and frontline members. From the nurses, doctors, grocery store workers, and many more, we wouldn't be able to have this day without you. So thank you. I also want to acknowledge all of the people who made graduation day possible. From Principal Jenkins and Vice Principal Lee, the Barrow High School faculty and the Northrop School District, to coordinators Mama Susan, the Student Council, and many others who I may not have named. Today would not have happened without you guys. To my teachers, thank you for teaching us how to form essays through the funnel method, which I probably didn't do in the speech. Um, how to balance chemical equations, the history of the North Slope, as well as many other things. But most importantly, thank you for investing your time and effort into helping the next generation of teachers, mechanics, doctors, and scientists. Furthermore, I want to thank everyone who has supported me and helped me get to where I am today. To my grandparents, my nanai and late tatai, thank you for devoting your life to your family. I, along with your kids, my cousins, and brothers appreciate everything you both have sacrificed in order for the future generation of Noblezas to have a proper American dream. To my parents, thank you for instilling the value of hard work and for being supportive in whatever goals and ambitions my brothers and I pursue. Thank you, Ma, for being the strongest woman I know. And thank you, Pa, for being such a hardworking man who I look up to so much. To my brothers, who I, pre I appreciate your effort, but I'm the coolest kid out of all of you guys. <laughs> and I have to acknowledge my mom waking me up for school, as well as the whole 32-unit apartments, because if you know Ilocanos, you know they're allowed for no reason. And it's funny because she would, she would go to work right after waking me up, and I would take a nap right after, and say 10 minutes, but then it'd be three hours. <laughs> I also want to acknowledge my cousins, because I know they will be salty if I don't mention them. But I, but I sincerely thank them for supporting me and mo motivating me. In early April of this year, I was fortunate enough to go on a trip along with the Ilisogravic College to San Diego, California. There we went to a conference called the American Chemical Society Conference, which had many undergraduates and postgraduates from across the entire country presenting their research to the public. These research that were presented weren't something that you can just look up. They were research that was conducted. This terrified me, partly because I will probably have to do all these things that these undergraduates had to do in order to be successful, and I doubted myself. But on this trip, I had an epiphany. I was talking to a bunch of undergrad presenters, and they told me that they never thought of doing research like this when they were my age because they thought they weren't capable enough but there they were. Reflecting back, I looked at this in two different ways. One, you don't have to be the strongest, fastest, or smartest at something to be successful. And two, doubting yourself is normal and a part of growth. As long as you work hard and surround yourself around people who motivate you and support you while keeping you in line, you will achieve your goals. And I also want to acknowledge my co-valedictorian, Brooke Singson for being a great friend and being on this journey with me. 
Thank you. The salutatorian of the class of 2022 is Justine Balanzar. <laughs> Justine has been very active in sports while at Barrow High School, all the while keeping up with her grades. She too took classes at Elisabeth College and will continue her studies there in the fall. Justine is the daughter of Teresita and Raul Balanzar. You guys hear me? Good? Okay. Oh, hot! Okay. Uy! Mabuhay po sa lahat ng mga Pilipino na nandito ngayon. Paglagay po si, and welcome. Uy! <laughs> I'd like to show my gratitude to all parents, family members, friends, teachers, staff, and distinguished guests for coming in and supporting the Barrow Whaler class of 2022. I'm ecstatic for all of the graduates today. Thank you to everyone who has helped to set up the graduation. Thank you to our principal, Mr. Jenkins, our vice principal, uh, Mr. Lee, and our senior advisors, Kat and Mama Susan, and many others who I probably haven't addressed. We as a class have gone through many hardships and adversities, but I'm glad to say that we made it. We've gone through at least four different math teachers our freshman year, endured, ju endured our junior year while learning at home, thanks to COVID, that was a tough one, and surpassed a senior year full of procrastination and chaos. Our, our class is filled with a significant amount of gifted young adults in various ways, and I am proud to recognize each and every one of us today. I mean, can you guys believe it? We won state this year. Yeah! I still haven't processed it. Uh, but it's an achievement that we've accomplished through years of hard work, gym time, and discipline. We were also determined enough to fundraise and get beat up by tough teams in Hawaii, but it was all for the better cause in the long run. I remember playing with my teammates in a tournament in Anchorage that occurred during our eighth grade year. It felt like it was just yesterday. We didn't have much funding from the school, and that year, we took matters into our own hands and walked all around town asking for donations. I'm sure that everyone knows that the community of Barrow will and hold their foot down to support the kids in any way possible, whether that be donating for any type of cause or the whole town flying out to support us during the state tournament. There is no better crowd than the Barrow crowd. <laughs> what other communities do you guys know of that would chant airball for the opposing team. <laughs> I would like to thank all of the coaches that took time out of their days to convey their wisdom unto us about the game to better ourselves. It's all for the love of the game. However, the true victory in it are all the memories that we have made along the way with friends who I can, pr who I can proudly call my Ellas, you know? When I first started schooling at BHS, all of the upperclassmen would say that we should enjoy and cherish these moments because time will fly by. And it did. I never believed them until right now, where I find myself delivering this speech for our graduation. Teachers would often advise us and tell us to think about what we wanted to do in life. To some of us, that question lies unanswered with the fear of uncertainty crippling us and others who have planned to further the education for their own greater good 
whilst also feeding their curiosity. Everyone has their own path in life, so I encourage you all to stop looking and comparing yourself to others and their own journey. Instead, you should reflect on the person you were yesterday and try to become a better you. We are still young and have a whole life ahead of us, so stop thinking and live. Be present in the moment. I would like to thank all of the teachers who are here tonight. Um, they deserve the credit for all the stress that we put them through, for, from preparing lessons every day, having to deal with hormonal teenagers, and also educating the future generation on their back. Your work isn't ignored or disregarded. Thank you. I'd also like to thank, oh, ho, 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 hold on, hold on. <laughs> um, I'd also like to thank my family for being here today. I would like to thank my mom and my dad for their endless support and sacrifices that they have made for us to live a better life than they did. They have instilled the importance of good work, good work ethic, and hard work by going to work every day. It didn't matter if they had the best beauty sleep of their life or were running off a couple hours of sleep. They would both get up every single day to go to work and put food on the table while also paying the bills with the sole objective of raising their children for a better life. Thank you to my brother and sister for putting up with me and for always having open arms for anything. Thank you to all my cousins who make everything fun through their, com through their company. It is imperative that, we find, that you find the right crowd for you, people who will support you through thick and thin. And if there's anything that I can advise future freshmen, is that you should live in the moment and have fun, but not at the cost of your future. Be a kid because adulthood is lurking around the corner. With that being said, I would also like to recognize the unrecognized. Today is a memorable day, and unfortunately, Crawford Putkatuck and Janice Richards couldn't be here with us today. However, they will, rip, they, they will forever remain in our hearts and live through us in our memories. I'd like to... Oh. I'd like to share a quote that my coach once said to us. He said that if you keep one foot in yesterday and keep one foot in tomorrow, you'll piss all over today. <laughs> it means to be grateful, be grateful for the little things in life. Um, I wish everybody the best of luck in their future endeavors, and may you guys succeed and flourish in life. Thank you for your undivided attention, and congratulations to the class of 2022. Our last academic award goes to Connor Wilson, who is the sole member this year of the Superintendent's Honor Roll. At this time, the students are going to take over for the rose ceremony.
Okay, I think we're ready to resume. I think some of the guys over here are going to fall over with all the weight around their neck. <laughs> uh, at this point in the program, we have a few scholarships. Uh, is there anyone in the audience expecting to present a scholarship today? There might be one or two. If so, please come up now. Sir, please. Price Brower. Good afternoon, everybody, and congratulations to the class of 2022 and uh, Barry Intelligence Electric Cooperative, Inc. and the Board of Directors are pleased to announce the three winners of the 2022 Beverly Mothic Ayak Scholarship in the amount of $1,500. And the first award goes to Dave A. Castillo. And the, and the second award goes to Jeremiah R. Goodwin. And the third one goes to Dominic A. Ray. Congratulations. And God speak in your future educational endeavor. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else? I have been asked to present three scholarships this afternoon. The first one is Leadership Barrow Annual Scholarship Award, sponsored by the Barrow High School alumni. It is, my, is with pleasure that I write to inform you that the Leadership Barrow Scholarship Committee has selected one recipient for the 2022 BHS Alumni Scholarship to receive $2,300 cash award. Brooke Singson. What? This is an annual scholarship offered by the Leadership Barrow, Barrow High School alumni. Each year, this program is made possible entirely by out-of-pocket donations from supporters of BHS, including alumni, staff, family, and friends of BHS. Come on up. <laughs> the purpose of this program is to provide academic scholarships to BHS seniors graduating with the intent of continuing their studies at a post-secondary educational or vocational institution. Scholarships are awarded to graduates who demonstrate strong academic performance, leadership within the school and community, and an intent to contribute to Barrow, the North Slope, and Alaska in the future. This program could not exist without the support of its donors. This, this year, that included 19 donors. The committee would like to recognize these donors by asking those in attendance to please stand up for recognition. Yep. There are, probably, there are probably a few of those people here, but they don't want to stand up. Brooke. Hey, Brooke. Brooke. Stay right here. <laughs> Dear Brooke, congratulations on being selected as one of the recipients of the 2022 Region 1 ASA Scholarship. 
At our last Region 1 Activities Association meeting, the Board of Control, 18 member school districts representing approximately 70 schools selected you for this award. Your scholarship application was outstanding. The Region 1 Board of Directors, the Region 1 Board of Control wishes you the best of luck in your post-secondary education. After you enroll in call, we'll skip that. Again, congratulations on being selected for this honor. Have a nice summer and good luck next year. Signed, Patrick Callahan, Executive Secretary. From the Rotary Club of Barrow, Nuvik, Personal Achievement Award. This certifies that Nicholas Lilibayava uh, Sialenga has been selected to receive $1,000 scholarship to the post-secondary institution of his or her choice, with an additional $500 available for the following three years. Nick, come on up. Khaleesi. But this year, for our comments, other speaker, our class has chosen Dave Howarth and Nicholas Evans. Wow, look at you guys, all grown up. Good evening, thanks for being here. For you audience members who may not know, the class of 2022 chose Mr. Evans and me to be your commencement speakers because I taught them English their freshman year and Mr. Evans taught them English their senior year. We are the bookends, so to speak, of their high school years. I'm the OG. Old guy, if you remember, or to some of you, Papa Horwath. <laughs> okay. Today, I will be looking back. Mr. Evans is the young guy, the YG. He will be looking forward. Before I go any further, I would like to acknowledge the fact that there are graduating seniors who I did not have the opportunity to teach for a variety of reasons. Those of you seniors in that category know that I'm know that know that I'm speaking to you too, as well as to those who sat in my classroom. Um, the class of 2022 graced my classroom during the 20 during the 28. Is there? There we go. I'm not sure what's going on with the mic. The class of 2022 graced my classroom during the 2018-2019 school year, and I use the word graced without the trace of irony. So, class of 2022, do you remember when I told you the first day of school when you arrived in my classroom? I tell all of my freshmen this on the first day of school. 
You won't believe how soon the day will come when you walk across the stage to pick up your diploma. Time will go by in a flash, just like that. And lo and behold, here we are. So let's take a moment to look back on your high school career. Your freshman year, which began in the fall of 2018, was the only high school year you had in four years that was completely free of the curse of COVID. As for your sophomore, junior, and senior years, they were all marred to some extent by the pandemic. For a long time, there was no in-person instruction, only online education in the form of Zooms. And when we did return to school, we had weird schedules with groups A and B attending school on alternating days. And there were no extracurricular activities, no events, no fundraising, no being with friends. There was, however, a mask mandate and other mitigation measures. There was also anxiety and fear. There are many ways to think and feel about those three years, most of them negative. You can say you were cheated, and yes, in a sense, that is true. You can be angry and bitter about the disruption of those years, and in a sense, you have every right to be angry and bitter. You can say that life is unfair, and in a sense, that is true too. It reminds me of a poster hanging in my classroom. Here's what it says. Life is not fair. Life is not easy. It's not your fault, but it is your problem. That's why you're here. The pandemic and all that went with it was not your fault. But dealing with it was your problem, and dealing with it will remain your problem unless you put it behind you. So there is another way to think and feel <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> about those three years and a lesson to be learned. And that's this. Your high school career is over. Those difficult times are now in the rearview mirror. And you know what? You made it. You are here right now to receive your diploma. After all that, to me, that speaks to your resilience. You can handle adversity. You are strong, even if you don't feel that way. You struggled, you adapted, and here you are. So be grateful that you had the strength and the willingness to get through your high school years without giving up. And remember that what you experienced during that time will help you deal with whatever challenges life brings you. And believe me, there will be many challenges. And also know this, as you go through life and garner more and more experience, your perspective, how you see your high school years, will change. You'll see it differently in five years, 10 years, 15 years. And in a flash, just like that, you'll be as old as I am today. And I don't even want to try to do the math to figure out how old I'll be when that day comes. Those numbers are way too big for this English teacher. Let's take another moment to go back now and talk in academic terms about your freshman year, the year that most of you sat in my Introduction to Literature class. We read a bunch of books that year, including Romeo and Juliet, Animal Farm, The Odyssey, Eagle Drums, The Adventures of Ulysses, and The Five People You Meet in Heaven, among other things. We watched movies of some of the books we read. We hit the vocabulary pretty hard, and we studied basic grammar. But right now, I want to focus briefly on two of the books we read. For those of you who haven't read the books, consider what I'm about to say as verbal trailers for them. First up is Animal Farm, which is as relevant today as it was when it was first published in 1945. Here are a few things that come to mind when I think about Animal Farm. It is a fable with animal characters and a lesson for the reader. It is also an allegory or extended metaphor for the Russian Revolution. A major theme of Animal Farm is the importance of knowledge and the profound dangers of ignorance. Other themes are how language is manipulated and how power corrupts. Do you remember Squealer? the pig who was a master of propaganda? Squealer reduced the idealistic vision for how a society can be perfected into the immortal slogan, all animals are equal, but some animals 
are more equal than others. A word about Squealer, whose lies, half-truths, and dissembling served a tyranny every bit as vicious as the one it replaced. It was said that his words could turn black into white and white into black. There are countless squealers abroad in our world today. I counsel you to be very careful about where you get your information. Always consider the source and its bias. The other book I'd like to say a few words about is The Five People You Meet in Heaven. Remember the very first chapter? It is entitled, The End. Here's the first paragraph. This is a story about a man named Eddie, and it begins at the end with Eddie dying in the sun. It might seem strange to start a story with an ending, but all endings are also beginnings. We just don't know it at the time. Eddie dies at the beginning of the story, and he goes to heaven where he meets five people whose purpose is to help him understand his life on earth. The first person he meets is the blue man, whose lessons for Eddie is that we are all connected. And later, then when Eddie says, then my death was a waste, just like my life, the blue man replies, no life is a waste. The only time we waste is the time we spend thinking we are alone. Take those words to heart, especially when you are troubled. The second person Eddie meets is the captain, Eddie's commanding officer during World War II. His lesson was about sacrifice. Sacrifice is not something to be ashamed of, it is something to aspire to. A word about sacrifice. What is it? Sacrifice is giving up something of value for the sake of something else regarded as more important or worthy. I urge you to practice making sacrifices for the sake of your family and your friends and your community. I also encourage you to get into the practice of sacrificing something in the here and now, a pleasure, a destruction, distraction, something fun for the sake of a future you. Deny your present self for the benefit of yourself in the future. To put it simply, get the work done before you go play. Your future self will thank you. Eddie meets Ruby, his third person, whose lesson for him is that hatred is a curved blade and the harm we think we <clears throat> are doing to others by hating, we also do to ourselves. She also taught Eddie about forgiveness, a word about forgiveness. If you are fortunate enough to have been forgiven for something you have said or done, as I have been forgiven, reciprocate. Give back by doing better, by being better. Eddie's fourth person is Marguerite, his beloved wife, whose lesson for Eddie is that lost love is still love. It merely takes a different form. She tells him, and now that you are leaving Barrow High School and your childhood behind, forever, take these words to heart. Memory becomes your partner. You nurture it. You hold it. You dance with it. Marguerite also says to Eddie, life has to end. Love doesn't. <clears throat> Eddie's fifth person is Tala, the little girl who Eddie encounters during his years as a soldier. Tala shows Eddie proof that his life wasn't meaningless and that it had a purpose. A word about meaning and purpose. I encourage you all to think deeply about those things. Make your life a quest, an odyssey, to find deep meaning and a worthy purpose for your life. I can't tell you what the purpose of your life is or what your life means, because that is up to you. But I can tell you this for what it's worth. The purpose of my life can be summed up in three words. Recovery, healing, and growth. I am always and forever recovering, healing, and growing, and doing my best to hold space for those who are doing the same. I don't always succeed because I am a flawed and fallen human being, but that is my ideal. Recovery means that if I'm digging a hole that I'm going to bury myself in, I become aware of it and stop digging. Whatever bad things I'm thinking, saying, and doing, I become aware of them and stop thinking, saying, and doing them. 
I get help and make connections to people when I need to. Just as importantly, I try to be there for people who need me, although sometimes I fail miserably at this. Healing means, among many other things, that I spend my time reflecting upon, in the presence of other people, the wounds that have been inflicted upon me by life or wounds I have inflicted upon myself. Forgiving myself and others is part of the healing process. Growth means developing all levels of my being. It means, ex it, means ex it means expanding the boundaries of my body, mind, soul, and spirit. I'm not going to say much about soul and spirit beyond encouraging you to explore those realms in whatever spiritual tradition suits you best. I will say, however, and in closing, a couple of things about the body and the mind. To do so, I'd like to share with you a simple but profound poem written just for me by, of all people, an Olympic coach, an unlikely source for a piece of literature. I have taken that poem, changed a few words, and I will share it with you as well. Consider these little poems my last lesson. Here's the backstory. Many years ago, when I was a young man, I traveled to the Scandinavian country of Finland, a far north place that borders Russia, to take part in the Finlandia, a cross-country ski race. While there, I stayed in the home of Levi Sapinen, who coached Olympic track and field athletes. I knew Levi because he was a good friend of the man most responsible for my becoming a teacher, Joe Johnson. Mr. Johnson was my cross-country and track coach. He was also my PE and driver's education teacher. Being a Native American, Coach Johnson was known to his Finnish friends as Joe Intiani, or Joe Indian. Anyhow, as I was preparing to leave Levy's home to travel back to the United States, Levy picked up a book, opened it, and wrote down something on the first page. The book was one he had written in Finnish. The translated title is Coach's Diary. I could not then and still cannot read any of the book except for the words he wrote in English extemporaneously, in other, words, in other words, off the top of his head on that first page before handing the book to me. Here's what he wrote, and what a lesson for the level of the body. February 27th, 1980, in Savonlinna, to Dave, from Levy, run. Run, run, ski, 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 hike, 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 in forest, in meadow, in water, in snow, in sand, on road, on path, by night, by day, always, always, always. I have always lived by those words. They have helped to keep my body strong for a long time. Now I will tweak the words a little bit making them an offering to you at the level of mind. May 7th, 2022, at Barrow High School, to the class of 2022, from Mr. Horwath. Read, 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 write, 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 learn, 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 in school, in home, outdoors, on road, on path, at work, at play, by night, by day, always, always, always. Congratulations, class of 2022, and thank you for the opportunity to speak. And thank you, above all, for being my students. It was a privilege to be your teacher. For the students in the room, nobody is ever allowed to call me YG. <laughs> I, uh, we're getting close to the end, ladies and gentlemen. I can see the children and the crowds are starting to get a little antsy. <clears throat> uh, if the seniors had wanted short speeches, maybe they should have chosen 
math teachers instead of English teachers. Uh, so we've got uh, a little bit more and then the, the fun part that we're all here for will happen. Uh, hello, seniors. Hello. Let's do that just a little bit louder. Hello, seniors. Hello. God, it feels nice to get to hear that one final time. Uh, Mr. Horwath already introduced me, but for those of you who don't know me, my name is Nicholas Evans. I teach senior English here at Barrow High School, and then, which means I taught <coughs> most of the seniors this year. And then even a couple of the ones I didn't teach as seniors, I taught them as freshmen in AK Studies and Norship History. Now, when a senior class representative first approached me about speaking tonight, I was extremely hesitant to do so. I'm not afraid of, of speaking in crowds or anything. It's just that, as the seniors might tell you, I'm kind of a you know, behind-the-scenes guy. In their words, more of a Sasuke than a Naruto. <laughs> I have been called the Shadow Hokage of the school. Oh my god, I can't believe that joke landed. <clears throat> so I asked what they specifically wanted me to say and was told that they wanted me to be funny to get up here and insult them and make them laugh, uh, to host the roast of the class of 2022, so to speak. And let me tell you all, if you don't know me, I have got some choice roasts. I got the good stuff, not the discount stuff you get at Stuckbuck when the power goes out. No, sir, this is prime grade. <sighs> but no, kids, I'm not here to roast anyone tonight or even to really be that funny after paragraph one. For the, for the English students in the room, this was the hook to the introduction. Uh, I apologize to all my students if that's what you're hoping for. I'm, I'm not so self-centered that I stand here and try to be the center of attention and make this all about my ego tonight. <clears throat> now, Mr. Horwath has done a great job, and he just finished talking about the most recent stage of your life. So instead of a roast, I'd like to talk to you about the next stage, the one that starts on... Monday morning. You can have Sunday off. You know, I know you need to sleep. Uh, I think pretty much every senior in the room tonight has heard me at some point talk about what I like to call the school game. For the adults in the room, if you are not bored and or video gamers, uh, at some point in your life somebody told you you had to jump through hoops. Same metaphor. You can, you can follow along. Being a student in school is like being a player in a complicated game. There are rules and procedures and roles to play, goals to accomplish, points to earn, credits to collect, stats to level up, side quests, levels, bosses. And to succeed, you have to play the game the best you can. That means, <laughs> did someone just randomly said Fortnite? Uh, good job, kids. That means players have to be willing sometimes to follow along, even if the rules don't always make sense, because that's part of school, and we know that. Why does a knight move on a chessboard in a funny L shape? That's not how horses move in the real world. Why does a pawn get promoted to a queen at the other end of the chessboard? That's not how the line of royal inheritance works. Doesn't matter, kids. That's, that's not the point. Those are just the rules of the game, and in order to win, you have to learn how to play. There are many paths to success in life. Not all of them involve graduating or beating the school game. Ooh, we've got a little gamer who comes up. Uh, hello, little gamer. I've been superseded. Um, he got to walk across the stage before any of you did. Um, <laughs> feel ashamed, I guess. Uh, for many people, whether they graduate or not, learning to play the game, even when it's hard to understand, sometimes is useful. Now, I've talked to most of you enough about this that I won't bore you all with a rehash of it. <clears throat> you asked me to speak tonight because I was a major part of your game. The final boss, so to speak. I know sometimes this game can be contentious. Sometimes teachers and students make mistakes as we play our roles. Perhaps. I'm willing to now admit, you'll never get this again, so savor it, record it if you want. Uh, perhaps at times I might have pushed you a little too hard. But perhaps at times also not hard enough. But now, you're no longer students. The game is over. 
No more late nights. No more assignments. No more lectures. No more teachers. No more school. Well, unless you're going to college, it's like New Game Plus. But for many of you, the game is over. Or, more accurately, this game is over. I have a spoiler for all of you. What I've been talking to you about all, talking to you about all year long as the game, the game does not end. Every single person in this room, every one of them has to play the game every day. It's just that when you're an adult, it's not always as obvious that the world is operating under such artificial rules as you feel like they do in a school. And the continuity between what you learn in school and how it applies to your success in the quote-unquote real world isn't always apparent. We know that. I've told you all this enough times, but you know that we know that mitochondria being the powerhouse of the cell is not exactly the most practical piece of information. And as much as I pride myself on my very carefully crafted letter writing unit, I know full well that any of you who are ever going to have to write a cover letter are going to do the smart thing and Google cover letter template. That's what I do too, kids. Uh. The same is true with those of you who are going to end up writing your essays. I told you to Google MLA essay template format, and that's much smarter than having to memorize it. No, a significant amount of your education has been just as much about developing skills. Reading, writing, reasoning, research, relationship, reaction, regulation, repair skills. Those skills will help you play a new game. The one that starts on Monday. All of human culture and modern society is built upon the assumption that we are willing to put aside our sometimes petty, self-centered interests for the greater good. Yeah, yeah, Charles, we live in a society. He really wanted me to say that. <clears throat> but societies do require, do require effort to function. Sometimes you have to play the game. When you're tired and your job has worn you down, or your college has sucked your soul away, or your family is fighting, you have to put on a face and play the game that needs to be played so that you can support yourself and develop your mind and take care of those around you who you think are important. Now this game has a goal just like the one you've just beat. But the goal in the adult game, the grown-up game, so to speak, is a lot more abstract. For each one of you, the goal of the game will be slightly different, but collectively, we work towards one goal together as a city, slope, borough, state, country, nation, and that's, sorry for the cheese, but it's to create the best world that we can. This is a game, collectively, maybe we're not always going to win, but we try our hardest. You all are part of that now. You're about to enter the same adult world that I am part of and that Mr. Horwath is part of and that all of the people sitting around you are part of. Just like school, adulthood has plenty of arbitrary rules. Uh, I won't name names, but I was talking to someone in this room about... Wow, two and a half hours ago, uh, about the fact that they missed their tax filing deadline. Uh, yeah. Adulthood has plenty of arbitrary rules, nonsensical policies, overwhelming deadlines, frustrating social problems, other nonsense that gets in the way of your goals. Uh, it's not terribly dissimilar from school in that respect. To work collectively to create the best world, nation, state, and slope, and the best Utkiagvik that we can, we deal with that. We work towards this today, every day, in our miscellaneous jobs. I do that as a teacher to help try to make your brains grow over the course of four years, but every single person in this room does that at their jobs as well. Everyone here does something to try to make Utkiagvik or the North Slope or the state of Alaska or wherever you call home better by contributing to their communities however they can. We do this every day as we work with our families, we take care of our environments, and we work collectively to raise each generation of children. And now that the school district and Barrow High School have agreed that you're ready to no longer be quote unquote children, you get to play. It's going to feel at first like you're starting back at level one as a freshman in life, 
For those of you who are going to college, you are starting back as freshmen, but even for those of you who are not, your first jobs are going to feel, your first, you know, your first post-high school jobs are going to feel like starting over in a respect. And I won't pretend that the work game and the college game and the family game aren't different from the one you played in school. In school, there is kind of an inherent inequality in the status of the players. In theory, in theory, the teachers and staff here at Barrow High School enact the desires of the superintendent and the district office, which represents the will of the board, who speak on behalf of our community. My goal as a teacher, and I've told you all this many times, is to listen to the community's needs and prepare you either to be working professionals here on the slope or to go to college, participate in a community there, and then hopefully come back to ours better educated, prepared to make your mark and improve the world around you. Schools are supposed to act as transfer centers for the knowledge and values of a community from one generation to the next. To you, and I've told you this and we've talked about it, school was you know, a series of tasks to complete and assignments to finish and points to earn, credits, etc., rules to follow, roles to play. It was a game, and I see no reason not to acknowledge that. But to me, and to the, your families, and to the community around us, school was an important part of your development, academically and socially, so that you could join the rest of us in adulthood with a base set of knowledge and skills so that you could be prepared for the real game, the adult game, the grown-up game. Uh, that's why my game and your game, they were different games. Sometimes our goals did not always align. <laughs> uh, they overlapped, but they weren't the same. That's why, that's the real reason for, for the juniors, sophomores, freshmen, 8th, 7th, etc. graders in the audience, that's the real reason why you have been tasked with calling me Mr. Evans for the last four years. Because our games weren't the same. Uh, we were playing different games. Now, you're graduates. That means we're no longer, or at least, you know, in an hour or whatever, no longer teacher and student, but equal members of the community of the world, of the United States, of Alaska, of the North Slope, of Utkiagvik, for entering adulthood and starting to play the same game as the rest of us, to survive, grow, and to improve the world around you, you have earned the right to call me by my first name, which I know a great many of you are weirdly very excited about. <laughs> because we are now equal players. You're going to be adults on Monday morning. And you'll start to figure out how you'll make your mark and how you'll take care of yourselves and your loved ones. You'll have to do that by sometimes swallowing your pride, following arbitrary rules, and doing things that don't always make sense. And that might frighten you. Equal players, the same game, does that mean I have to perform in college and at work on the same level as all the adults around me? Yes. Kind of, M mostly, but yes. It's time to go out into the world and to prove that you can stay at the same playing field as the people in this room tonight. And I know that a great many of you are harboring fears about that. It was nice to hear Justine so openly and candidly mention that in her speech. But even as we stood out in the, the hallway by the library tonight, some of you told me that you were afraid about your future about how successful you'll be in the game of life. That uncertainty can be overwhelming. I know some of you are less concerned than others, but all of you have question marks hanging over your head as you prepare for the next stages of the game. You may not express it tonight, and you may deny it openly to me or whoever else, but the feelings are there. I've seen them in you. You can't deny them. Uh, I, your valid, one of your valedictorians specifically name-dropped me as the guy who caused all of your mental breakdowns. I've, I know how scary adulthood can be to many of you. Every one of us here tonight felt that once. I was 17 not that long ago. Uh, 
A great many of your, your colleagues and families, et cetera, are sitting in here tonight, and they're Barrow High School alumni too. They sat in the same place that you did years ago, feeling the same fears. We all felt that fear once, and that fear is a good thing. It means you are willing to admit how little you might know and how little prepared you feel for the rest of the world. The fog of the future clouds all of your paths. College is not a certainty for you. Those of you who are going to college might decide that you're not ready in a year or two. Those of you who are not going to college, you may end up there in two years, 10 years, 20 years. My mother was born in 1950. She did not go to college until 2004. Do that math. Uh, your careers, whichever you end up choosing, are also not a certainty. People don't stay in one career for their entire lives anymore. Your families are more of a certainty than anything else, but as time passes, even they will pass from your lives. Cherish them while you have them. Your friends are not a certainty either. You'll soon learn which one of your high school friends will and will not stay part of your lives after graduation. You know that uncertainty is in your future, and you're worried that you're not ready to play the game as an adult, that you might lose. As my last ever lesson for you, let me throw out some logic and try to convince you otherwise. That's what I'm really here to say. To convince you, beyond the doubts in the back of your mind, that you are ready to play and win the grown-up game. This room is full of people tonight. Hundreds. Most of whom are adults. And they're here to see you graduate. To celebrate you, yes, but more importantly, they're here to verify that you've completed this game. They're here to validate your graduation in a more meaningful way than I can. Let's start with the teachers and staff of Barrow High School. They believe that you're ready. You're going to get little pieces of paper that prove that soon. Our superintendent, district office staff, school board representatives, and representatives from our school advisory council all believe that you're ready also. The entirety of the North Soap Borough School District stands behind these diplomas to tell you that you're ready. That's what the diplomas really mean. We have representatives from the borough and the city here because they know that you're ready and they're excited to see you become productive members of the communities around you. Your families are here because they believe you're ready too. Your parents, guardians, aunts, uncles, akas, appas, cousins and cousins and cousins and cousins and cousins are all here to celebrate you. Not because you earned whatever number of credits. We're all proud of you for that, yes, but to show you that we're here to support you because we think you're ready for this. They're here to watch you walk across the stage tonight and to stop being students and to start being graduates, to become adults. They would not be here if they did not love and support you. They're here to show you that they think you're ready. I hope you know you've made them proud. And I know that if you were my children, I'd be proud of you too. All of you suffered through being my students this year after all, so I know you'll do pretty well. You played my game and you won. And I can see a number of my other graduates in the stands tonight, and they can commiserate with you. My game is not always an easy game to play, so you did a good job for beating it. There are hundreds of people here tonight, and every single one of them is here for one reason. To welcome you to adulthood. To tell you, beyond any shadow of a doubt, that we, all of us, believe that you are ready to join us as our peers, as equal players in the game of life. Welcome to adulthood, seniors. You're going to do great. We're not sure if we failed to confirm with the mayor, or perhaps he's out on the ice, but obviously the mayor is not here this evening. However, he did have a chance to address the class of 2022 at the baccalaureate, and I'm very thankful for that. So at this time, we're going to move on with the program. 
At this point in the ceremony, all the good lines have been spoken. Those before me this afternoon have spoken of hard work, perseverance, looking towards the future, and reaching for your dreams. Also, the happy times and the times of darkness. For me personally, this is the 17th time I've had the privilege of being on stage with a class of seniors handing out diplomas. It's a great pleasure every time. I would also like to acknowledge all of the work, effort, and love given by the senior class advisors, Susan Dunbar and Catherine Tibial. I wish you, the class of 2022, all of the best in your journeys ahead. At the end of the program, the seniors will exit the gym first, but then please join us in the lobby and cafeteria for photos and light refreshments. I would now like to call upon school board member uh, Freda Nagiak. Why do I mess your name up? Freda Nagiak for the conferring of diplomas. Freda Nagiak. Member of the School Board of North Slope Borough School District, teachers, parents, families, and friends. As principal, I certify that these students have successfully satisfied the standards set by the State of Alaska, as well as the North Slope Borough School District Board of Education, and may participate in these graduation exercises. It is my honor to represent the faculty and staff of Barrow High School and recommend these students sitting before you for the receipt of their high school diploma. Thank you, Principal Jenkins. As a member of the North Soboro School District Board of Education, and by the powers vested in the board by the state of Alaska, and as a member of the Board of Education of Home Rule Borough, I accept your certification and recommendation of these students. Having completed all the requirements of graduation set forth by the policy of the North Soboro School District, I declare these students graduates of Barrow High School. And the North Saboro School District, congratulations students, we are proud of you. And I just wanted to end with the, the chant, Adiga! 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 Ah! <laughs> congratulations. I would like to introduce our assistant principal, Lee Karsevich, to assist me in the presentation of diplomas. You guys ready? <laughs> we shall begin. Jonah Sosoic. Amai Milo Ibarra, Apua. Justine Balanza. Somebody prop her up.
Joseph Bellegarde. Lewis Caitlin Brower. Sierra Brower. Ashton Casillo. Min Chan. Jillian Crespin Adams. Dave Castudio. Marcus Degun. Joshua Delmolin.
Jen Lee Donovan. Samuel Ellison. Iacolic Evans. Irvin Felide. Jeremiah Goodwin. Ashan Herman. Iagak Billy Huntsman.
Nicholas Loli Maava Salalenga. Hello, Ioe Aone. Lena Lokina. Dakota Miller. Evan Mongolyuk. Angelina Moreno. Kalisi Muti. Lucinda Nayakit. Mark Nile. Joe Renz Nobleza. <laughs> oh. 
Kyle Nobleza. Charles Ortia. Jericho Penner. Sakaluk Paningana. Matthew Putkudup. Kinuan <laughs> Rea. Cameron Rexford. Dominic Rom. Oh, sorry, Dominic Reyes. I apologize. Dominic Rom. <laughs> Morgan Sakera. Aurora Schraffenberger. Congratulations. 
Destiny Silvesi. Michael Silvesi. <laughs> Brooke Singson. Kenneth Slatten. Liberty Solomon. Roseanne Spear. <laughs> Maku Sui Sui. Shara. Elma Tuva. John Carl Tuazon. Wilson.
Congratulations. Taking that guy ain't all time about your search gas mail. <laughs> Connor Wilson. Chloe Yu. And I lastly wanted to mention that um, although he couldn't be here with us um, physically, he's here with us in the spirit, and um, that's Crawford Sue Putkudup. I guess we have a stand-in. Seniors, please stand up. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for. Graduates, please move your tassels from right side to left. Congratulations to the class of 2022. We're officially graduated. All right, before we start bursting the balloons, let's have a benediction and a closing. But before we do, who has control of the lights? Who, did somebody have, you know, just tell them they can. All right, everybody, we practiced earlier on turning your flashlights on on your phone. This time they're gonna turn the lights off and we're gonna give honor to the graduates who are not here tonight You've heard the name of one, and that was Crawford Sue. But there's another one as well, and her mother is here, Janice Richards. And we want to give respect to her as well. Uh, you've probably heard she was lost, and they never, this was been her graduation probably from Keita, but we want to give our respect. So everyone, for a moment of silence, turn your flashlights on, and someone turn off the lights and we'll give it a moment of silence. Hold them and wave them in the air for the people who are not here. And now let them stop waving, stop waving, and just leave them up. Thank you. And you can turn the lights back on. Turn the lights back on. <laughs> we love the darkness and the light. And here's your benediction, graduates. Let's get this party started. Let us pray, and now go forth on the good work that's set before you. Be tireless. Seek the common good. Love and nurture the people and things that you value. 
Attend your work with integrity so that what you believe may be what you do. And when you feel as if you might have become defeated, I want you to think back on today and know that you have already accomplished much. May your lives be a blessing to all who you meet. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the church said, Amen. God bless you. You were talking about the refreshment. I did earlier. Seniors will be exiting first.